In just seven years, cyber conflict has grown into a regular headline on the news pages. But figuring out who's doing all that computer hacking and why can be a confusing game. At the heart of this segment of the Monitor's Cyber 101 series are the players, the array of cloaked digital actors, bad actors, many of them, acting out on the internet. At one end of the scale, perhaps the least dangerous end, we have individual hackers. As it has been for years, the motivation for many hackers today is still all about bragging rights concerning their knowledge of the inner workings of computer networks. We've got Hollywood's version, of course, a young Matthew Broderick in the 1983 movie War Games, unwittingly hacking into a military computer to show off for his girlfriend and nearly starting World War III. But back in the real world, a hacker named Kevin Mitnick spent most of the 1980s being hunted by the FBI for hacking into telecom and computer companies, mainly because he could. One notch higher up the cyber food chain are the hacktivist groups, so-called because they're the digital version of activists. Hackers who tout a cause, such as maintaining the freedom and anonymity of the Internet as they rampage across cyberspace. As a group, they tend to be among the most capable of hackers, sharing their knowledge with each other. The hacktivist group Anonymous has taken up the cause of Internet freedom. It hacked and blocked Tunisian and other government websites after the Arab Spring pro-democracy uprisings began in 2010. It also used denial of service and web page attacks against corporations like Visa, MasterCard, and PayPal that refused to do business with the WikiLeaks website of Julian Assange. Another hacktivist group, LulzSec, targeted websites of government agencies like the FBI and CIA and other law enforcement groups, anyone really, that its members perceived to be encroaching on internet freedom, or they did it simply for the lulls, hacker speak for the laughs. One step higher still in terms of their threat level and capabilities are the professional cyber criminals, often organized into cyber crime gangs that are all about one thing, the money. Whether it's spam, ransomware that holds your computer hostage, identity theft, stealing online banking credentials, the name of the game is getting the cash. We've heard a lot about them in the news for about a decade, including the 2013 hack of the Target stores that in just a few weeks stole personal information on about 100 million people. But until recently, we had not heard much about the upper echelons of the cyber conflict, the elite government cyber spies and cyber warriors that often use the most sophisticated techniques for sneaking into networks, corporate, government, or adversary defense systems worldwide. The cyber spies include government-backed groups like the National Security Agency in the U.S., the People's Liberation Army, Third Department in China, and other spy agencies worldwide. We're also talking about cyber warriors, national military groups such as the U.S. Cyber Command and its Russian, French, British, and of course, Chinese counterparts. Making sense of all these cyber actors or players can be tough. Charting them out, as the Cyber Conflict Studies Association in Washington has, you can rank these players on an offense-defense axis, how likely they are to attack, and a capabilities axis. If they attack, how worried should you be? You can add into the mix non-governmental organizations and cybersecurity companies, and so begin to understand the lay of the digital landscape and the players in this real-world cyber game.